I want us to become aware and be recognized that the Holy Spirit is always with you. And as long as we know that we learn to be intimate with Him, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. When you've spent time with God and you've been in His presence and you've experienced His presence and you're intimate with the Holy Spirit, you will walk just as Jesus walked. Family of God, we are indeed living in challenging times. We know that the world has faced terrible calamity, and we know that according to the words of Jesus, that uh, we would experience in the last days that there would be all kinds of calamity. You know, we went through very horrible times. A lot of people experienced a lot of tragedy, a lot of loss, uh, whether it was in family, people they loved whether it was in terms of our own, you know, I, I saw statistics the other day that the suicide rates in South Africa have gone up because of mental turmoil, because of lockdown and all of that. And it just shows you that people are struggling and battling. A lot of people lost their jobs. Many, many families who spent a lifetime building a business just wiped out. And when you listen to people, there's... There's a sense of, you know, we can't do this again. What's going to happen? And yet we know the enemy is still out there. And Jesus said in the last days things would get so tough and rough that eventually when things do happen that we need to be ready and prepared for it. But yes, the good news. When it comes to the believer, we're not afraid. See, even though God was going to bring a flood upon the earth, Noah was not afraid because he had heard from God and he was preparing. And it doesn't matter how bad that flood got. I mean, it wiped out the entire earth. Him and his family survived because they had been serving God and were listening for his instructions. And as long as they obeyed his instruction, even though the rest of the world was, was totally turned over, they were kept safe and protected. Even when the whole of Egypt was coming down on Israel, you, they didn't have to fear. God was with them, and God opened the Red Sea for them to get through and saved them from a horrible fate that could have happened had that is, the Egyptian army caught them. And you see all the way through the Word of God again and again and again and again. Many of the faith heroes that we listen to and we read about and we see that the great Hall of Fame, the Hall of Faith fame, of men and women of God that stood the test of faith and succeeded. You look at every one of them. It wasn't just because, well, they went to church and, you know, God loved them. No, everyone faced a turmoil, faced an enemy, faced a battle, faced famine. Something was going to wipe them out where anybody else would have said that would have been impossible to come through. It's not like, well, that could have been God maybe, but, you know, I mean, anybody could really have solved that problem. No, it's when thing, things seem like impossible. There's no way out of this. That's exactly the time you see God step in. And these men and women of God stood in faith with their God and saw great delivery, great recovery, great turnaround, great victories. Family of God, I'm here to encourage you today. He's the same God today. He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even though things may be crashing around you, David said, I've seen even hung lions go hungry, but I've never seen the righteous begging for bread. Why? God is for you. Who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And sometimes I hear Christians that start to worry and are concerned. And I realize the reason we worry or are concerned is because the pressure is happening around us. There was Peter when he was walking on the, on the water. I mean, that, that is so out there. Jesus said, come, and he believed him, and he stepped out. It wasn't the stepping out that was a problem. He had already got onto the water. It was when he looked at the waves and the storm, and the wind was upon him. And he felt that pressure. And as a result of that, fear entered his heart. But you notice Jesus, he said, look on me. Just keep your eyes on me. And when he did that, he walked back to the boat with Jesus. 
Family of God, I'm here to tell you today that God wants to take you beyond what you can even imagine. I know you can look at the words great recovery, and in our mind we kind of work out what that means for us. It's, you know, maybe getting my job back, maybe getting my house back, maybe getting the car back, maybe getting, I don't know what, what you may have lost. But what God wants to do in your life, when you look back on this year, 2022, you're going to be shocked and amazed. You're going to like, well, I was not expecting that. That's always the way I saw it with Moses. I can imagine God says, I'm going to deliver you. And he lifts up his staff. And all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. I don't know exactly how it went, but I can play my mind into it. I, I like to imagine. And just imagine a rumbling and a noise and a wind. And next moment, splatter, splatter, splatter. You know, the water starts. And all of a sudden, it separates. And next moment, boom, it lifts up. And there's walls on either side, dry ground. And I can just see Moses staring at that thinking, I would not have thought of that. I knew God was going to deliver us, but <laughs> open a sea. And family God, I believe you're going to have those open Red Sea moments in your life. And it's time for us to believe that and to know that. And I realize the only reason I've ever had concerns or worries or problems in my life is because there's been times that I've taken my eyes off God. And here's the thing, it really bothers me. Uh, I was, uh, Apostle Theo was sharing with me a message that, that he had heard where a preacher said, you know, he even doubts God, he even doubts the Bible. I think, what are you doing in the pulpit? If you doubt this book, why are you there? Why are we allowing our hearts to get to that place? Because God wants you to experience the best he has for you. He says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, to increase you. To make you more and more. Say amen. amen. So family God, I want to talk about who we are and how we walk with God. Because so often the enemy, the way he gets in between us and God is to destroy our trust in God. And if he can break that relationship, break that trust, then we will not see what God has in store for us. When you look at Jesus on the earth while he walked on this planet... You saw many, many signs and wonders, miracles, again and again and again. Many, many lives were touched and changed by Jesus, restored, healed, delivered, provided for. And that same Jesus still wants to do that in your life today. And sometimes we look at Jesus and you ask the question, why was he so successful? And people say, well, he's Jesus. He's supposed to be. He's God. But you remember when he came to this earth, he came as a man. The Bible says in Philippians, he emptied himself of all his power and glory, and he came in the likeness of a man. And while he walked on the earth, before he was baptized, you didn't see any miracles in his life. And yet, when he gets to that river Jordan, and he is baptized... And as he comes up out of the water, we see in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, when Jesus had been baptized, he came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. Now, I always saw the picture that, uh, you know, when he was baptized, as you can keep reading, you'll see, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him, I thought, you know, the way I read that was the heavens opened so that the Holy Spirit could come upon him. And you kind of, you know, you don't see it or, you know, put a full stop by that, but you can imagine the windows closing again. But that's not what it said. It said the windows opened to him. The windows opened to him. Not that it didn't, it didn't say the windows opened for the Holy Spirit to come through. See, when he had come up out of that baptism, the windows of heaven opened to him. How many of you are believers? How many of you brought the Lord's tithe to the house of God? The Bible says the windows of heaven are open above you. We're living under an open heaven. Say that. I'm living under an open heaven. Say it again. And Jesus said the windows of heaven opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God. Everybody say, Spirit of God. Descending like a dove and alighting upon him, and suddenly a voice came from where? Heaven saying, This is my beloved Son 
in whom I am well pleased. I'm always interested in the way God put that. The father said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Uh, this is just a side note. I've learned to train myself to stop saying I'm proud of you because we know pride is a, is a heart issue. And I know we there's sometimes you can say good pride, but, you know, I, I want to make sure that we keep our terminology accurate. God didn't say this is my son. I'm proud of you. He said, I'm well pleased in you. I'm well pleased in you. And, and so I've been, I've been using God's terminology. And that's just, you know, that's, that's it's a, pr- a journey I went through, if you're interested. And so, yeah, but the point I'm making here is God speaks and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, it's interesting in this encounter, you know, there's different ways that uh, people interpret scriptures, and there's a certain movement out there that, that talks about Jesus only, that, that Jesus is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But when you see the way it's mentioned in the Word of God, you've got to look at the terminology. Uh, God is one God. I said God is one God. But how many know Adam and Eve were one? And then God separated them and then brought them back together as husband and wife and called them one flesh. Janine and I are one. I said, Janine and I are one. You don't expect to see her in me. And yet, I am in her and she is in me, spirit-wise. Isn't that right? And so God is one God. But if he was only one person, he would have let us know. He wouldn't allow confusion to reign. Yeah, you see one of the classic examples is when Jesus was baptized, you notice that It says, Jesus, in his body, he was still there. He went in the water and he came out. And what happened? The Holy Spirit came. And notice it says, like a dove. The Holy Spirit is not a bird. You see the pictures. A bird comes on Jesus. No. The Holy Spirit's not a bird. It says it came like. Like. Now, you can imagine a, a bird is very, you know, very quiet when it flies and when it comes into land and, and lands gently. Well, that's exactly the Holy Spirit came. So Jesus saw that. Now, I don't know if anybody else saw it, but he saw this Holy Spirit come and come upon him. And then you hear a voice from heaven. Now, you have to say, now, who was that? Or was that just Jesus doing ventriloquism? Was Jesus throwing his voice from heaven? No, there was another person in heaven. Who is that? That's our Father. So yeah, you see the three persons of the Godhead revealed because we know that Jesus is God according to John 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word in verse 14 became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So Jesus is God, and yeah, we see the Holy Spirit coming upon him, and the Father speaking from heaven. Can you see that? And so here we have this example where Jesus now is baptized in water, and as he comes out the water, the Holy Spirit comes upon him. Now I want us to focus on this concept of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? And then you have a look in Luke chapter 3. I want to just read it from another perspective. Same account. But yo, yeah, you will see, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form, like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well Please, there it is again. Now remember, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so here we see the Holy Spirit coming bodily upon Jesus. In other words, the Holy Spirit has a body. But notice it's not a flesh body. Jesus didn't walk around with a bird for the rest of his life. No, the Holy Spirit had moved 
into Jesus. Bodily. Bodily. Spirit body is as real, if not more real. It is the real that God is. When you are in the realm of the spirit, spirit is as solid as we feel solid now. God is not some, you know, just vapor just floating around somewhere. The Bible speaks of God having waist and hands and eyes and face. And are you with me? He's seated on a throne. And the same with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a bird. He is a person. He is a person. And I want us to get to know this because, you know, when we're born again and we save, we always think of God in heaven. And if I pray, will God hear me? You know, I'll, my prayers go up and they just hit the ceiling. Your prayers don't have to go higher than your nose because God is with you all the time. Amen. The moment you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. And if we want to see the results that Jesus had, we notice when it says in Hebrews, uh, when it says that without faith it is impossible to please God, he who comes to God must believe that he is. Believe that he is. Believe that he is is. And I want the Holy Spirit to be so real to you that you know that He's always there with you. You will never be afraid again in your life. When people are sometimes afraid to be alone or they're afraid of the dark or they're afraid, you know, nervous what's around them, is because they think they're on their own. Come on, how do you know uh, when you're growing up, I don't know if this happened to everybody, but sometimes dad would say, you know, I mean, it's like late at night, you're about to go to bed. And then he says, I want you to take the, the, the rubbish out and put it by the street. It's like, do you know what time it is? <laughs> and you know what's out there. Come on, how many you went through that as a young person? And you're like, you're looking around all the corners and you, and you grab the button. Now you've got to act like cool now and you put it down, but you're going to get back inside quickly before, you know. Whatever your mind's trying to tell you is out there. But if dad's with you, oh, you can play outside all night. Because dad's right there. You can see him. Isn't that right? Well, family of God, the only reason we're afraid of anything or concerned about something or we're worried that we won't be able to pay the bills, we're worried about the next day, we're worried about our job, what's going to happen in the future, our health, is because we've lost sight of God's with us. God is. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. How many you believe that? Say, my God said, he will never leave me nor forsake me. And so I want us to become aware and be recognized that the Holy Spirit is always with you. And as long as we know that we learn to be intimate with him, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you've spent time with God and you've been in His presence and you've experienced His presence and you're intimate with the Holy Spirit, you will walk just as Jesus walked. You'll see great signs and wonders, great miracles happening, provisions, supply, everything you can ever imagine, want or desire, God will make sure happens in your life. See, look at Luke chapter 4. Remember, Jesus was then taken out to the wilderness and the devil tried to tempt him those three different times. And each time Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. He believed the word. He trusted the word. Now, he is the word, but he had obviously spent time in the word. The Bible says that he grew in wisdom and stature. Well, the only wisdom that he would have grown in was the wisdom of studying the word. He'd studied the scriptures. And so even though he was originally the word, he still is the word, but when he came in the earth, he had to read about it himself. And he'd spent time in the Word and developed his faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. How else did he please the Father? By having heard the Word. And so in those intimate times of being with God, reading the Word, studying the Word, he was then taken after he'd been baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was tempted on those things. And he used the Word every single time. And then it says in verse 14, Jesus returned in the power of the spirit to Galilee and news of him went out throughout the, all the surrounding region and he taught in their synagogues being glorified by all notice this Jesus came in great power of the spirit 
You see, in the world today, you have courses where it goes and talks about, you know, developing your own self-confidence and self-power and have power in yourself and knowledge in yourself. Family of God, I noticed that me putting trust in myself has failed. How many you put trust in your own ability and capabilities and then you realize it wasn't enough? No, I want the power of the Spirit. I want the power of the Spirit. There are certain things I can solve in myself. You know, if I have a flat tire, I know how to change it. But there's so much in my life that I've got no idea how to do. And yet God says, I want to help you in that. I want to bring you through that. I want to save you. I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. I want you to experience heaven on earth. What's impossible to man is possible with God. And he says that he walked in the power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. I want to see that power in my life. Now, sometimes when we read about these things and we hear about things happening in other places, we can get confused. What does it mean by power? And we're not talking about being spooky and woo-woo and weird, weird. Because, yeah, notice, Jesus came in the power of the Spirit. It doesn't say, and then he went on to be weird. It said he went about Teaching, 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 teaching. Family of God, there are times that I've been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit and put me on the floor and wiped me out, and I've experienced tremendous emotions as a result of that. But that's not the only reason we have the Holy Spirit. It's just to have a, a woo time in a church building. It's when you're in that classroom, when you're in that boardroom, when you're in that meeting, when you're in that gym, when you're in that place where God has placed you to be, where you need to be able to connect with Him and be able to help people in their lives. People are hurting out there. People need answers. People need solutions. I said people need solutions. I said people need solutions. They don't need more goosebumps. They need answers. I said they need answers. How is they going to get those answers? Because you know the Word of God. You know God's power. You've seen His power. You've heard God's Word. You put it into action. You've seen the result of it. Now you have a great testimony to be able to go and tell others about it. Say the power of the Spirit. See, when you're facing an impossible situation, you should be able to say, Jesus, I know you're with me. Call me. We're walking on the water. Hallelujah. How are you ready to do some water walking? God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Once the Holy Spirit had come, now the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the healing, delivering people was happening. God wants to do the same in and through our lives. He wants to anoint us with power to do His will. Family, the moment you're born again, the Holy Spirit entered you bodily. In this series, Alan Back takes us on this journey to cultivate an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. You'll discover the secret to the success of Jesus' ministry. You will learn the importance of being intimate with the Holy Spirit and you will discover the areas that God is restoring in the lives of those who are part of His kingdom. You're going to see great power flowing through you. And as we learn to be intimate with the Holy Spirit, we're going to see many, many multitudes getting saved. Purchase your series and get in contact with us here at allenbagministries.org. Every head bowed, every eye closed. As Christians are praying, just before we leave today, I want to make sure that everybody here is in a right relationship with Jesus. My friend, maybe today you are here either visiting with us or maybe you saw us on television, thought I'd pop in. Maybe someone invited you. Maybe you walked past. I don't know how you came to be here. You're watching us online. It's not an accident that you're hearing me say this to you today. God loves you. You've heard today the truth of who He is. And maybe you haven't experienced Him in your life. But the good news is God has saved you. And our sin kept us separated from God. But the good news is Jesus died on the cross and He paid the price for your sin and then rose from the dead. And today He is alive proving your sin is forgiven. 
And today all you have to do is believe that the Word of God says if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that He's your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. And today is your day. I'm going to lead you in that prayer. Say this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You gave your life so that I could have life. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. And I believe that. And I call you Lord. You are my Savior. From this day on, I live for you. To worship you. To walk intimately with you. And I know as I do, I see you as my God. I'm born again. And I know one day, I will leave this earth. And I'll stand before you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You are born again a child of God now. Congratulations to all of those that gave their life to the Lord today. What an amazing decision that you chose to make today. If that was you that made that decision, please go to our website and give us your details. We have an awesome pack that we'd like to get to you today. It will help you build your faith and it will help you in your walk with God today. It's a free gift from my mom and dad that we'd like to get to you. Now, I'm sure you enjoyed this really powerful teaching today, but there is way more available to go and learn and listen to. Go to our website and you can find more there and you can purchase it for yourself so you can listen to it wherever you are. You can learn more about the intimacy with the Holy Spirit and you can learn the benefits of what it is to be intimate with our Lord and Savior. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Joshua Bagg. You're watching Wisdom for Life. Remember, Jesus is Lord and life is a choice. Choose life. Visit Allen Bag Ministries online. At allenbagministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bag, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. Alan Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis, and our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. Jesus.